What is up guys, it's been a while since I made a video. Sorry about that, I've been dealing with a little bit of stuff and I'm trying to get over it. So um, we're going back to the normal schedule of making videos every single week. And as promised, I'm giving you guys a free tutorial from my new t-shirt design masterclass in Photoshop that I put out on Udemy. It just launched this morning. So here is a free uh, tutorial from that course. Um, sorry about the audio ahead of time. This particular tutorial, the audio just didn't come out as good as I wanted it to. I had to do a lot of noise cancellation and stuff like that on the audio. So sorry if it's not the crispest audio or the best audio in general, but um, I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. And if you guys wanna take my Udemy course, I gave you guys half off of it right now. You guys can get it for $25 instead of 50. So if you guys wanna take full advantage of that course for $25, it's in the description below. The first 200 people to sign up will get that uh, offer. And I'm very excited to present it to you guys. I worked very, very hard on it. It's a very in-depth course and it gets straight to the point. No bullshit. We're gonna keep making videos throughout this whole week. So keep an eye out on my channel. Make sure you are subscribed and also hit the thumbs up button on this video. It means a lot to me. Enjoy the course, guys. In this section, we're gonna be stepping up our game. We're gonna be actually taking everything we learned so far and applying it to a full frontal t-shirt design. This is really going to test our skills and even maybe show us a thing or two um, on how to you know structure a design and put it together before we actually get started though the first thing i want you guys to do is actually download this wolf that i have here um, so we can actually use it with this design i found this on freepick.com that is spelled with a k not a c so it's really important that you guys use a k because there is a bad website if you put a c so just make sure you do free pick Dot com with a K and you're good to go. Um, I warned you. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead and um, download that wolf. All you have to do is drag it into Photoshop. So we're just going to click it and drag and let go. And it's going to have this little box that pops up that says import PDF. We're just going to hit OK and it's gonna open up a brand new document with that wolf. We're gonna be trying to make a design just like this one right here. Um, another thing that's important to note before continuing on is the font that we're gonna be using today. I actually included the link to that font. It's part of the type kit that you get with your Creative Cloud subscription. It's called Brothers OT, and that's the one we're gonna use for this design. Again, you can use any font that you would like, whatever you feel comfortable with. And we also wanna make sure our background is white and make sure it's uh, on so we can uh, see it a little easier when we design. So the first thing I wanna do is actually drag out a, uh, a circle, right? Because that's gonna be the main component of our centerpiece where our wolf's gonna sit. So we're just gonna drag out a circle just like this and don't overcomplicate it. You just want that circle to be there. Once we go to our ellipse, we wanna to go to fill, selecting our circle, and we wanna make sure it is a black fill. So once we have our circle, we can do Command T or Control T, I think on a PC, and we can just kind of resize our circle holding in Shift and Option or Shift and Control if you're on a PC, I believe. And again, I'm not too good with PC because I do not use PC. We're gonna title this circle Solid Fill Circle. So just do that real quick or solid circle, whatever you wanna put, it doesn't matter. Um, so solid circle, and the next thing I need to do now is I can right click and duplicate, or I could just do Command J, and now we have a solid uh, copy of that layer. So the next thing I wanna do now is actually go to my circle, I wanna change that solid fill, let's say to white, and we wanna make the stroke, let's say 75, just for now, and we wanna make sure that is a black stroke. So we're gonna go black stroke on that, 75 width, and then we're gonna drag that below our solid circle layer, and we're just going to resize it, holding in Shift and Option. And we can always resize things as we go to make sure you know we like what we're seeing. Let's go and look at our original design now and just kind of reference it. I think we're off to a pretty good start, so we're just gonna keep going with it and see what happens. So now we have our uh, solid circle, and then we have our outer circle. So let's name this outer circle stroke so we know exactly where everything is. Now what we need to do is make a rectangle behind everything. So we just need to drag out a rectangle just like so. We want it to be kind of big and we don't want it to take up uh, the entire width of our artboard. We just kind of want it to copy the width of that circle. So we're just gonna do that. It's gonna mimic that solid fill and that stroke that we made on our last circle. And as you can see, it's hiding everything. That is completely okay. We're just gonna drag it below the outer circle. And as you can see, it is where it needs to be now. Now, the one thing I did notice is that my strokes are a little thin. So what I can do is make them just a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead and go 80 with our stroke, just to make them a little bit thicker. And we're gonna do the same thing for our circle, our outer circle, so make it 80 stroke. And then we're just gonna keep tweaking things until we're happy, like resizing the circle. So this is a pretty good starting point. Now what we need to do is we need to add the rectangles on the top and bottom before we add our text. We're gonna add some rectangles 
just copy what I'm doing, guys. And if you're confused, just pause it. Keep going over what I'm going over. It's going to take practice for you guys to get this down. I've had 10 years to practice this, so that's why I'm so familiar with it. So anyway, we're going to right click or we can go up to our warp here, but I just like right clicking and then hitting warp. And again, we're copying the same arc as our circle. We're trying to at least, just like this. And I think that looks pretty good. And obviously what we want to do next is add a solid white fill and we want to add that 80 stroke. So we're going to do that real quick. So we're going to select black on the stroke color and then just type in 80 right here where the pixels are, hit enter. And as you can see, now we have a nice rectangle. It looks beautiful. Now what we can do is we can duplicate it and put it at the bottom. So as you can see, everything is super fluid when I do this. I, I know what I'm doing already. I know every tool. I know the shortcuts. And it's making my life so much easier when I'm designing. Um, one thing that we're missing right now is circles on each side. So we have two circles on the left and two circles on the right. So we're going to go ahead and make those real quick. To add the circles, all we have to do is create some duplicate copies of our outer circle stroke and transform them by resizing them a little bit. It's really easy, so we're going to do that. I created a duplicate copy and I'm just going to hold and shift and resize one and we're just going to keep duplicating that one that we have. This design will probably be just a little bit different than the other one, but it's I don't mind that. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of cool to like experiment and see what we can come up with. We're going to drag the first circle in place. We're going to duplicate it again. We're going to drag the other one right there and then we can actually group these and again align them to the artboard and we want to align these vertically, right? Then we want to title this group left circle so we know exactly where they are and then we can duplicate them and then basically just take them to the right side now. That's all we're doing, dragging them to the right side, hitting OK on that, and that's it. Now they are aligned up perfectly. We used our smart guides here, right? So before I add the text, what I want to do is go to the solid circle, and I just want to make it just a tad bigger. Now what I want to do is actually make sure I add the top and bottom text and arc it. So I need to go back to my ellipses here, and I need to create a quick ellipse and make sure I'm copying the same arc as that banner. Again, we're going to always make sure we're copying the same exact arc so it doesn't look off, if that makes sense. And we could drag this layer above the banners group. And then I need to hit T on my keyboard. I want to hover over this blue line and then select. Now it's laying down my lorem ipsum. And I can type out the wolf or something like that. And these, this is just for text placement, clearly. Um, so I typed out the wolf. And I want to go to my font, brother OT. And then all I have to do is hit A on my keyboard to go to my pass selection tool. And we're just going to change the anchor points here to center it. So we already learned about adjusting the text on the path with the kerning and everything. So what you want to do is select the entire text line here. So I'm just double clicking on it. We can change the kerning right here. And we can also change the baseline shift right here. So everything you need is right here in this character palette. Instead of making another circle at the bottom, all we really have to do is use the same one that we already created. So what we could do is actually change the fill a little bit on it just so we can see where it's going to sit and we just drag it down just a little bit. And as you can see, this is a really nice arc at the bottom already. So we don't, again, we don't need to make another circle and we can use that same text path. So, so we could type out the Wolf Bike Club or something like that, I don't know, whatever you want. Again, it's just text placement. A on our keyboard now, go to our path selection tool. Same thing over and over again, right? We're repeating what we already learned and then we need to change the baseline shift because this needs to sit nicely within that banner, obviously. So go ahead and go to your baseline shift, change it just a little bit until you are satisfied with where it's sitting. Um, the next thing I wanna do is start typing in my date. So I'm just gonna put 2019 where these circles are. So I'm doing 209. We can keep the font size pretty big. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep duplicating this two and then changing it. So we're gonna do 20, so two zero. Now I can select the two zero and just hold an option, duplicate it by dragging and then letting go. And it is gonna help me align it with my smart guides. So now let's go to our wolf and let's adjust a few settings before we drag it onto our design document. So let's go up to image, adjustments, levels, and then in the levels we're going to change the highlights and the shadows so we can darken this wolf nicely. So we're going to bring out that detail, make it really dark, hit OK. What I'm doing from here is I'm just going to delete this design by free pick. A fun little trick to delete just the white on the outside is to go to your magic wand tool and you want to make sure that this middle option right here next to tolerance is checked. And then you just left click once and that's gonna delete just the white on the outside. And then I can take my um, rectangle tool here and then I can just take my rectangle tool, select it, do command X or command C to copy and then go to my document, do command V. And the reason why I kept the white is because I wanted him to look like this. I wanted him to stand out with that black uh, ellipse that we have in the center. And now I'm just gonna do command T on him and resize him. 
And now all we have to do is add the text at the bottom and we're good to go. In order to add text at the bottom, all we have to do is go to our solid circle, hit T on our keyboard, and then go to the very bottom and just click once and it's gonna add some lorem ipsum. And our solid circle in the center will remain the same, so you don't have to worry about that. And then we're just gonna type out um, California or something. Again, we can type out whatever we want. Change the font size, it's gonna be way too big. All you have to do is adjust the position using the path selection tool and then change your baseline shift and your kerning and you're good to go. You're gonna have something that looks like this. At this point, we can call this done. We can add anything extra we want to, but I think it's good the way it is. What I really wanna do now is show you guys how I texture, show you guys the method that I use to texture. So what we wanna do is actually copy the entire design with the white background. So I'm gonna do Command A and we're gonna do copy merged, okay? And then we're gonna do Shift Command V and that's gonna paste it in place, okay? And once we paste that in place, as you can see, we have the entire design with the white background fill um, all in one. From here, what we could do is we can actually add some noise. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a really nice textured look. We're going to go up to noise and we're going to add noise. Once you click on noise, you're going to see this little panel pop up and you want to adjust the amount here. So we're just going to go up a lot more so we can see a bunch of noise. And we're going to make sure Gaussian is selected with monochromatic. And then we're going to go up to filter, go to blur and then go to Gaussian Blur. We're just gonna add a slight blur to this. So when we actually bring out that texture in the black, it's gonna make it look hand-drawn more. I'm gonna do about 2.5 on the pixels, hit okay. Now we're gonna go up to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Notice we're using levels a lot. And the reason why is we're gonna be able to bring out that texture now. So we're gonna adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights on this just to bring out that, that texture. So we're gonna do this a couple more times to really bring out this texture. So we're gonna hit okay on that, go back up to filter, go to the very top and add another Gaussian blur. Same thing. We're gonna repeat the same process over and over again until that texture really shines. Just like this. Um, again, I just want this to really look hand-drawn and I think it is looking more hand-drawn right now. It's looking grittier. And that's basically all I want to accomplish with this first part. So we're gonna hit okay on this. And now, obviously, we're gonna have the white background still, right, which I don't want. Before I add the extra texture and color, what I need to do is get rid of this white background. The easiest way is to use blending options. So we're gonna click on this design, go down to effects, and hit blending options. And where you see this top white bar here, it says this layer, because we're selecting this layer. We're gonna actually go to the right part here and hold an option and split this in half. So we're taking this white out. That's what we're doing. And then hit okay. And then from here, we can make this a smart object. So I'm right clicking, making that a smart object, rasterizing it now. And then now you can see that we can change the color to whatever we want, and it's not going to have that white background. On Google, let's type out paper texture. Go to images. And under paper texture, you're gonna see this one that says seven plain textures. And you can use any texture. We're just gonna copy that real quick. So copy image, go back to Photoshop, do Command V, we're gonna rotate it. We're gonna make it bigger. Now what I wanna do is hover between layer four and layer three, hold an option and force layer four within layer three. And then we're gonna change the blend mode until we see something that we are happy with. And now we can really make this texture pop by using levels. So we're just gonna keep doing that same process over and over again. And as you can see, we have this nice and grungy, gritty look. What I can do now is add a gradient to it force that within group four, which is our texture design. So we can name this texture design, add any gradient we want or any just solid color we want. And that's basically it guys. Now we have this really, really cool design that we made in Photoshop and it is print ready. So if I hide the background, you can see that it is ready to be printed. If you guys enjoyed this free t-shirt design tutorial from my Udemy course, you're definitely going to enjoy the full course in the description below. I gave you guys half off, like I said before. So if you guys wanna save some money, the first 200 people will get half off right now. I definitely recommend you take it if you're really serious about learning design and t-shirt design in general. So that's it for me, guys. I will see you in the next video. We got so much more to talk about on this channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep creating. Keep being awesome. I'll see you guys later. Peace.